scalloped potatoes are thinly sliced potatoes cooked in milk and then baked in a cream mixture and topped with cheese until browned and bubbling. It makes my mouth water just thinking of scalloped potatoes. Uh, potatoes can be divided into two main categories, starchy and waxy. Starchy potatoes such as russets are fluffy and flour we, uh, when cooked, and they're really good for roasting, baking. Waxy varieties such as new potatoes and fingerlings are low in starch and have a creamy texture and hold their shape well when cooked. That's why for scalloped potatoes, we are using a Yukon Gold. Very, very important. They release just the right amount of starch, but still hold their shape. And uh, we have three pounds, and I've sliced most of them on a mandolin to get even sliced potatoes. You want them all the same thickness. And you can do this with a knife. It takes a lot longer. Uh, getting one of these little hand mandolins is really useful. Just be careful to watch what you're doing. Don't put any fingertips in your potatoes. Now, if you're going to postpone cooking for any time whatsoever, make sure that you put these in water. It'll keep the potatoes from turning color. Then drain them well and dry them. But these are perfect because we're going to put these right into two and a half cups of milk. Now, I learned this method from a chef. He said, oh, Martha, you can make scalloped potatoes ahead of time for a dinner party by cooking the potatoes partially in milk and just holding them on the stove. Then when your guests are sitting in the living room and you're gonna prepare your dinner, you can take them out of the milk, layer them, bake them, and they're ready, perfect. So now bring this to a boil and simmer for approximately three minutes and then turn them off and they are ready to use in pretty much any sliced potato dish. So now these have boiled for three minutes what I like to do is just remove these to a strainer or a colander. You see how nice and intact each slice is? That's what we want. We're going to be layering these slices in a baking dish. And this way they'll get a chance to cool off a little bit just to make it a little easier to handle. Okay, so now to the milk, add one cup of heavy cream. And this will be your liquid in which you will bake the layered potatoes. I like to rub the dish first with a cut piece of garlic. Just rub the whole surface. It imparts just a little bit of garlic flavor to your scalloped potatoes. There. Now if you smell your dish, it smells like garlic. Now with a brush and a soft piece of butter, generously butter the dish. Sides and bottom. There. Now have about two tablespoons of butter cut up into little pieces and five ounces of grated Gruyere cheese. It goes so well with potatoes, very French and proper. So now potatoes. You're going to layer with cheese, salt, pepper, and potatoes. So start with the bottom. Now these are still a little bit hot. If you're very fussy and you want really delicate looking scalloped potatoes, make sure your layers are overlapping, just like that. And these are already starting to dry out, so it's essential that you work kind of quickly. So now in between each layer, a little sprinkling of salt, a tiny bit of pepper, and a little bit of Gruyere cheese. So pretty. And dealing with the potatoes this way in a partially cooked state, there's no discoloration whatsoever. They'll take less time to bake because they're already pre-cooked and they're gonna taste delicious. Now, a little bit more butter, these little dabs of butter, you can put on with your finger or a knife there and now top with the Gruyere. You can use Gruyere, you can use Appenzeller, you could use a white cheddar. Now this is ready to pour the cream gently on top and get this right into a 325 degree oven. It'll take anywhere from 60 to 80 minutes until they're golden brown and ready to eat. So here, let's see how these look. 
Oh, they look creamy. The liquid has been absorbed. Just what you would hope scallop potatoes would look like. Every family has its favorite recipe for potato salad. Today I'm sharing a Castyra favorite. It's naturally sweet and creamy, and it uses sweet and creamy red skin potatoes that are dressed with a little mayonnaise, vinegar and herbs, and then topped with sliced hard boiled eggs. And uh, into a steamer basket, a little bit of salt, water to the top of the steamer basket, add five pounds of red potatoes. These are red bliss. You could also use the uh, small white potato, but I just like the idea of using the red. It's a very flavorful potato. Don't skimp on the water underneath the basket. Make sure you have plenty because you don't want that to boil away during the 25 minutes or so that it takes to cook the potatoes until they're tender to the point of a sharp knife. So here the potatoes are perfectly cooked. They're still warm. The skins will just peel off as you can see. So very easy, use a little paring knife. And if there are any little brown spots, you can just slice them off. You don't want those little brown spots. Chachi Kasha, who I learned this recipe from, Chachi Kasha means Aunt Catherine in Polish, made the best potato salad. So here we have our bowl of sliced potatoes. Now to this, we add one white onion. It's a medium onion and we have finely, finely grated it on a wood rasp. This really is important to do, uh, to grate it finely. You don't want big pieces of onion in the potato salad, and you want it almost undiscernible. You just don't want to know that it's there. You want to taste it. A half a cup of distilled white vinegar. You could use cider vinegar, but Chechi Kasha always used white vinegar in her potato salad. She also used about a teaspoonful a um, little heaping teaspoonful of sugar and about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt. So I'll do a, a little bit more than a half a teaspoon. Lots of black pepper and one cup of mayonnaise mixed with about a cup of buttermilk. Now sometimes if she didn't have buttermilk she would use water but I like using just the buttermilk. And you can use a low fat buttermilk or a whole fat buttermilk. And if you don't have buttermilk, you could use whole milk thickened with the white vinegar that you just poured into the salad. That makes a very tasty homemade buttermilk. So see how nice and creamy that looks without being cream? And now add your potatoes. And we're not going to stir, we're not going to use a spoon on the potatoes. The way we're going to mix is to pour back and forth from bowl to bowl. You can also add some chopped cornichon or sliced cornichon. You could also use dill pickles, very finely chopped, which are very delicious. Or you could use a sweet gherkin also. So here we're just going to pour from bowl to bowl. And as this sits, it gets thicker as the milk and mayonnaise gets absorbed into the cooked potatoes. See how good this looks? And it has to be chilled. This will be really, really tasty in a couple of hours. So look how beautiful it looks. I love it. That's a good mix. So then a little bit of a toss looks watery, but this will get absorbed into the potatoes as they chill. If using a mayonnaise-based dressing, it's best to let the potatoes cool a little so that the mayonnaise doesn't melt and become oily. These are plenty cool for the mayonnaise. It's very important to chill the potato salad before serving and garnishing with hard-boiled egg. So here's our potato salad. And put this into your serving bowl. And again, sometimes Chechi Kasha, Aunt Catherine, would garnish with hard-boiled eggs if it were for a picnic. Or if she were selling this in the deli, there would be no hard-boiled eggs. Just a sprinkling of parsley and sometimes dill. Level it off a little bit. You see how nice and moist it is? Very pretty. 
And then with your knife, we've already sliced the eggs. These can go around the perimeter of the bowl. And they'll get mixed in and people get a little bit of egg. Make sure your eggs are not too hard boiled. These are 13 minute eggs, which means you bring the eggs to a boil, turn off the heat and cover for 13 minutes. That's generally a perfect hard boiled egg. And a nice sprinkling of parsley. And here you have a beautiful potato salad, thanks to Chachi Kasha Krukar from Jersey City, New Jersey. And whether at a picnic, a barbecue, or a holiday dinner, everyone loves potato salad. If you think your mashed potato recipe needs an upgrade, this silky and creamy potato puree is just the thing. Potato purees may sound simple, but there are a few tricks to achieving a rich, velvety, smooth texture. And today I'll be pureeing russet potatoes from Idaho with brown butter and cream. And the result, well, it is smooth and glorious. So peel your russet potatoes. We need three pounds of potato. And the reason we're using this kind of potato is because uh, they're dry when they cook and you want a dry, uh, not waxy kind of potato for the smoothest, silkiest purees. And this should just be cut into pieces of a uniform size. So basically in half and half again, and then in pieces. Have a large kettle fitted with a steamer basket and water in the bottom. You can see what I'm talking about here. I love these steamer baskets. They are so, so useful uh, in the kitchen. Very essential for all kinds of vegetable cookery and potatoes, well, they steam very well. Now, if you were adverse to peeling your potatoes, you can steam whole potatoes, three pounds, right in here. They'll take a little longer, uh, but they work very, very well. So now cover and let steam until very tender to the point of a sharp knife. Now, the next step is to make your brown butter. One and a half sticks of butter over a low flame until the milk solids in the butter turn a nutty brown. It takes a little while, but this will impart a really amazing flavor to your potato puree. And in a strainer fitted with a little piece of cheesecloth, add two cloves of garlic, and about six sprigs of thyme. Your brown butter is going to be passed right through this, and the butter then will taste a little bit like garlic, a little bit like thyme, and a lot like brown butter. So here is our brown butter. It is a really nice nutty brown color. Pour this butter over the garlic, hear the crackling, and over the thyme and add your one and a half cups of heavy cream. All of this into a saucepan. Now heat this up because this is the liquid with which your potato puree will be thinned and smoothed. Press out all the goodness. The infusion of the garlic and thyme in the butter and cream seems like such a little thing, but it really makes a difference. So I'll leave this on low while I smooth the potatoes. So the potatoes are done. Take the entire steamer basket out and just let them sit for a minute or two just to cool off slightly. You don't want them cold for the next step because we're going to just gently mash them, breaking them up a little bit so that we can then push them through a strainer. Now, you can use a food mill, which acts sort of like a ricer. A ricer, you put the potatoes in and the potatoes come out in little pieces all the way around. Or you could use a tamis, which is a classic French tool that you use uh, to smooth out any kinds of purees. And 
This is a little too fine for what we're doing, but these chinois come in different textures also, and you could probably use that if you have one. But I find that pretty much everybody has strainers of different gauge screen. This is about a 32nd of an inch screen, and this goes down to much smaller than that, maybe a 64th of an inch screen. Very fine. This is our last pass through. So start with your potatoes, just put them in a bowl. And now the russets, I am just mashing. And to make all of this go through the strainer quickly, you can add about a cup of your milk and cream mixture. Now that's not traditional. And French chefs out there, don't get mad at me, but we find that it just works faster. And I think we don't want to make it hard on our home cooks. These are lessons for the home cook. So I will add, oh, a scoop, maybe a scoop and a half. Now this is the old fashioned potato masher. Sundays before the chicken or the pot roast or the roast beef came out of the oven, this was my job to make the smoothest, most delicious mashed potatoes ever with this. I wasn't happy with the result. It was always a little bit lumpy. That's why we've elaborated on a technique and we're going to put this now through the strainer. Now, very, very important. Don't think that you can use a food processor or a blender. They are way too vigorous and will make glue out of your potatoes. They cause too much starch to release and a gluey texture results. But look what's coming out, a very fine textured puree. This now goes right into the finer strainer. So you see, this is the last of the potato to come through the sieve. And it is really good. Now it's time to mix the potatoes with the brown butter, garlic, thyme, cream, and milk mixture. A ladle at a time. It takes a little while for the potatoes to absorb this cream. It seems like a lot of liquid, but these purees are delicate and they are moist and you don't want them to be stiff and dry in any way. I'm gonna add some salt right now, coarse salt. This is gonna take about a teaspoon of salt and a big pinch of white pepper. Now, if you wish, you could add a hint of nutmeg. There you have it. Put this on a heated platter. Mm, so good. The brown butter sauce makes these potatoes hard to resist. Don't even try. With just a few easy steps, these smashed potatoes are a cinch to make. These golden potatoes are crispy on the outside and creamy on the inside. And in my opinion, one of the best ways to enjoy potatoes. We've steamed the potatoes for the other recipes, but for this recipe, we are boiling them. And it only takes about eight to nine minutes for uniform potatoes such as these. Use potatoes that are no bigger than an inch and a half across. And we're using white potatoes, which are really yellow skinned. We're using red bliss potatoes, which are red skinned. And we're using a little blue potato, which is purple skinned. Inside the flesh is blue. And uh, we put this in a pot of water that's over a high flame and bring to a boil and cook until the potatoes are soft to the point of a sharp knife. That's gonna take somewhere about eight to nine minutes. You'll drain them and let them cool until they're not too hot to smash with the heel of your hand. Now we have some that are already done so I can just proceed with the recipe. Oil, a baking sheet like this with olive oil. And here's our potatoes. And you just take your hand like that and smash, just like that. A white one, a purple one, 
and here's a red one. And these can be put quite close on the baking sheet. They're not going to grow or expand or do anything like that. And just, they look like little flowers, kind of smashed flowers on the baking sheet. And they heat in the oven so nicely, they roast now. And if they're too hot, use a little towel, a little piece of towel over the potato. But it's better, I think, to let them cool enough so that you can handle them. Now, there's just two pounds of potatoes here. They should all fit on this baking sheet. And then just sprinkle a little tiny bit more olive oil on the tops. Sprinkle with a little bit of salt and pepper and some thyme leaves. Put them in a 425 preheated oven and roast for, oh, about 25 minutes. Now just strip the leaves off the stems and sprinkle, making sure that each potato has a little bit of time on it. So there, these go straight into your oven. Now you could substitute rosemary or parsley if you prefer those uh, herbs to thyme, but I love potatoes and thyme. Twenty-five minutes, four twenty-five. So you can arrange these on a serving platter. Uh, you can just dump them on a serving platter if you like, but I think they're so pretty that uh, they should be treated with tenderness. And these are so crispy and pretty. During the baking, you can turn them over. These were turned over once, but you can see the different colors. And you can serve these plain like this, or if you like, with a dollop of sour cream and sprinkle with chopped chive. Now that is a pretty platter of smashed potatoes. They'd be great to serve at a party like this, an inexpensive hors d'oeuvre, or with a roast or a steak, uh, anything you choose. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll join me on the next episode of Cooking School. Pierce two russet potatoes and bake for an hour and a half. When cool, have lengthwise and scoop out the flesh. Add milk, butter, sour cream, grated cheddar cheese, and season with coarse salt and pepper. Fold in chopped chives. Scoop the filling into the potato shells. Place in a baking dish and top with cheddar cheese. Bake 20 minutes, garnish with chives, and serve.